I would now like to call on Mr. Jeremy Brownridge, Private Secretary to the Lieutenant Governor and Executive Director of Government House, to introduce each recipient and read their citations. Could I please ask you to withhold your applause until the end of each individual presentation? Mr. Brownridge. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm delighted, and it is with a certain degree of humility that I read the citations today. First, I call on Janet Austin, Vancouver. The CEO of one of the province's largest nonprofit organizations and the former chair of the Greater Vancouver Board of Trade, Janet Austin has reached the highest level of achievement in both the social and business sectors. Janet has guided YWCA Metro Vancouver through a number of transitions that have put the organization at the heart of the lives of tens of thousands of British Columbians, using its services and programs in supporting their physical and mental well-being at more than 40 locations. Over the past decade, Janet has spearheaded community-focused initiatives at the YWCA, expanding its geographic and social reach in order to increase access to affordable housing for low-income single mothers and women live, leaving abusive relationships, supporting youth in foster care to transition to independence, and broadening services for marginalized women in Vancouver's downtown east side. A champion of social change, Janet volunteers on several committees and boards, including the Big Sisters Honorary Advisory Board and the City of Vancouver Healthy City for All Leadership Table. She's a passionate mentor and role model for women across BC. She received an honorary degree from Kwantlen Polytechnic University and the Queen Elizabeth II Golden Jubilee and Diamond Jubilee Medals. Your Honour, Madam Premier, I present for the Order of British Columbia, Janet Austin. We'll get it next time. I now call on Kim Baird of Tawasson. Kim Baird is a remarkable leader. Fearlessly determined and deeply committed to social justice, she's relentlessly pursued her dream of a prosperous, self-governing Tawasan First Nation. Serving as elected chief for six terms, she negotiated and implemented the first modern treaty in the BC treaty negotiation process. Her community is now on the road to prosperity and self-sufficiency by creating employment opportunities and attracting millions of dollars of investment. Kim initiated the Tawasan Mills Project a commercial real estate development valued at over $780 million. The Tuas and First Nation Treaty negotiations are recognized as a model for effective negotiations throughout Canada and indeed the world. Much sought after as a motivational speaker, Kim makes herself available to any and all seeking advice on First Nations. Kim's experience, knowledge and impact on creating change for First Nations governance continues to be instrumental in opening doors and creating relationships and opportunities which would otherwise not exist. She serves on many boards including Clear Seas, Canada Public Policy Forum and the Premier's Aboriginal Business Investment Council. Kim is a member of the Order of Canada and received the Inspire Award in 2015 which represents the highest honour the Indigenous community bestows upon its achievers. She's also received an honorary degree from Simon Fraser University. Your Honour, Madam Premier, I present for the Order of British Columbia, Kim Baird.
I now call upon Beverly Boys of Surrey. Beverly Boys, Canada's most successful female diver and diving coach, is the major driving force behind BC Dive, the organization responsible for developing and promoting diving throughout British Columbia. Her energy, organizational ability, and her tough-minded will to succeed have made it the successful organization it is today. Beverly began her diving career in 1962 in Toronto and went on to win provincial championships of Ontario, British Columbia, Manitoba, and Quebec. She's a 34-time Canadian national champion and three-time Olympian. Unbelievable. <laughs> Pardon me. She won three gold, three silver, and two bronze medals at four Commonwealth Games and was chosen as Canada's Athlete of the Year in 1969 and 1970. Since her retirement from competitive diving, Boys has search, served as a coach and official in competitions around the world, judging at the highest levels, including four Olympic Games, five World Championships, and six Commonwealth Games. Beverly has been an active teacher of the sport from the from learn to dive beginners to national team members. She's coached many successful Canadian divers and has worked to improve the expertise and consistency of Canadian judges. She began diving clubs in White Rock and Surrey, an important training center for BC divers. Beverly is a member of the Order of Canada. Your honor, Madam Premier, I present for the Order of British Columbia, Beverly Boys. I call Alan Eaves of Vancouver. Dr. Alan Eaves is a leukemia specialist and visionary business leader in British Columbia. Alan founded the Terry Fox Laboratory and was its director for 25 years, building the laboratory into an internationally recognized research center known for being an incubator of new ideas such as the regulation of growth and maturation of blood-forming stem cells. As head of hematology at the University of British Columbia, Vancouver General Hospital and the BC Cancer Agency for 18 years, he launched one of the finest bone marrow transplant programs in the world which by the early 1990s had treated more than 1,500 patients. He is UBC Professor Emeritus of Hematology. Alan is the founder and owner of Vancouver's Stem Cell Technologies Incorporated, now the largest biotechnology company in Canada with more than 800 employees. He's credited with creating jobs in industry for young people who love science and with developing innovative products for the emerging industry that will lead to future cell therapies for cancer and other serious diseases. Stem Cell sells 2,500 products globally to thousands of academic and industry researchers. Alan has published more than 200 papers in leading peer-reviewed scientific journals, has served on many, many boards, and has won many scientific awards. Your Honour, Madam Premier, I call for the Order of British Columbia, Alan Eaves.
I call Frank Justra of Vancouver. Frank Justra, a leading Canadian entrepreneur in both the natural resource and filmmaking sectors, is also an outstanding philanthropist who makes an impact around the globe. Frank began his working life in the investment industry. He became chair and CEO of Yorkton Securities in the 1990s, leading it to become an internationally renowned natural resources investment bank. He also founded Lionsgate Entertainment, now one of the world's largest independent film companies. In 1997, Frank established the Radcliffe Foundation, which supports a wide variety of local and international causes. He has actively responded to the global refugee crisis by providing humanitarian aid and supplies to refugee camps in Greece and Turkey, and has visited the crisis region, including Lebanon and Jordan, a number of times just over this last year. Closer to home, Frank was instrumental in the creation of Street to Home, a public-private partnership formed to address homelessness in the city of Vancouver, and is actively involved as a mentor to the Boys Club Network. Most recently, the Radcliffe Foundation donated $100,000 to support wildfire evacuees from Fort McMurray. Frank is an active executive member of the International Crisis Group, working on analysis and advice to policymakers for prevention and resolution of deadly conflict. He and former U.S. President Bill Clinton launched the Clinton-Justra Enterprise Partnership, which invests in parts of the world where poverty is widespread. Frank is a recipient of many awards, including the 2014 Dalai Lama Humanitarian Award. Your Honour, Madam Premier, for the Order of British Columbia, I present Frank Justra. I now call John Mann of Vancouver. John Mann is a founding member of one of British Columbia's iconic musical groups, Spirit of the West. He's also an actor, solo artist, and dedicated humanitarian. Spirit of the West was formed in 1984, and John has played a key role in its life, growth, and message. Over its 30-plus year history, Spirit of the West has been recognized as a pioneer in Canadian Celtic music, having toured extensively in Europe, the United States, and across Canada. With nearly 300 recorded songs, one in particular, Home for a Rest, has become a multi-generational favorite, known by millions and often called Canada's unofficial national anthem. The band's song lyrics resonate deeply with individual experience in John's distinctive voice as the band's trademark. John's contributions to charity are remarkable, especially considering the great challenges he's faced in his own life. A cancer survivor, Mann worked actively with the BC Cancer Agency and BC Cancer Foundation. In 2014, John announced that he had early onset Alzheimer's disease. And for two more years, up until April of 2016, the band continued to perform together with John courageously staying fully involved and in contributing to society's awareness of Alzheimer's disease. He now donates his time and talents to the Alzheimer's societies in BC and in Ontario. He's also done charitable work assisting orphan children in Swaziland. Your Honour, Madam Premier, for the Order of British Columbia, I present John Mann.
I call on Salima Noon of Vancouver. Salima Noon is British Columbia's preeminent sexual health educator and a tireless advocate for, the, for empowerment education. Thousands of children, teens and adults throughout British Columbia have attended her comprehensive body science workshops, tailored to reflect her firm belief that every person, regardless of race, religion, age, ability, gender identity, gender expression, or sexual attraction, deserves respect. She arms young children with knowledge and skills to keep their bodies safe and empowers parents to share positive, meaningful messages about sexuality with their children at every age. Salima also created BC's first empowerment workshop for preteen girls, Go Girl, in 1999, which became iGirl, tackling topics such as body image, media literacy, gender stereotypes, internet safety, consent, healthy relationships, and assertiveness skills. iGuy, launched in 2014, challenges society's definition of masculinity to help boys have healthy relationships express their emotions, and make smart decisions online. Salima's recently created Salima Noon Empowerment Foundation aims to sponsor body science, iGirl, and iGuy workshops at more schools. Committed to growth and success of other, others in the field, she has voluntarily trained, mentored, and inspired many. Salima co-authored the book Talk Sex Today, which will be released in the summer of this year. Your Honour, Madam Premier, for the Order of British Columbia, I present Salima Noon. I call Cornelia Han Oberlander. <laughs> Cornelia Han Oberlander, recognized as one of the world's leading landscape architects, is known for her research, creativity, artistry, innovation, risk taking and recognition of the importance of the preservation of the environment. Cornelia was among the first class of women to graduate from the Harvard Graduate School of Design with a degree in landscape architecture, and from the beginning of her career, placed a high value on collaboration with allied professionals, education, and mentoring young landscape architect graduates. She's worked in collaboration with some of the world's most renowned architects, such as Arthur Erickson and Moshi Safti. Many public spaces around the world reveal her influences. Her design for the play area at the Children's Creative Center of Expo 67 in Montreal changed the way that the public thought about children's play and playgrounds. Cornelia pioneered respectful references to the landscapes of First Nations people as seen at the UBC Museum of Anthropology. Her green roof design of the visitor's center at the da Van Dusen Botanical Garden answers to the issues of climate change, environmental responsibility, and the living building challenge. Cornelia is the recipient of many honorary degrees, the Order of Canada, several Lifetime Achievement Awards, honorary memberships, medals, and fellowships in Canada and abroad. Your Honour, Madam Premier, for the Order of British Columbia, I present Cornelia Hahn Oberlander.
I'm now delighted to call upon Pauline Rafferty of Victoria. Pauline Rafferty became recognized as one of Canada's leading executives in the cultural sector as she transformed the Royal BC Museum into one of the premier museums of its kind around the globe. As Chief Executive Officer, Pauline revitalized the museum, widened its accessibility, and enhanced its reputation as she brought world-class exhibits and a business focus to the institution. Her work helped strengthen Victoria's tourism sector and economy. Pauline devoted her adult life to ensuring that British Columbians could enjoy top quality cultural experiences. Earlier in her career in British Columbia, she helped develop conservation and heritage policies and tourism marketing programs. For many years, Pauline has been a model for women working in senior public service jobs, helping many advance their careers. She's also served as a member on many boards, including Simon Fraser University and the National Capital Commission. More recently, she serves as interim chair of the Canadian Museum of Human Rights in Winnipeg, where she brings her specialized knowledge, management know-how, and excellent interpersonal skills to the task of building a new institution for the country. Pauline has received an honorary degree from the University of Victoria and the Queen Elizabeth II Diamond Jubilee Medal. Your Honour, Madam Premier, for the Order of British Columbia, I present Pauline Rafferty. I call Sandra Richardson of Victoria. Sandra Richardson is an innovative community leader who effectively uses her skills to create relevant and successful programs that respond to community needs. Under Sandra's leadership, the funds managed by the Victoria Foundation have grown from 20 million to over 270 million in 15 years. This widespread growth in community giving is largely due to her outreach to the community in identifying worthy causes. Among Sandra's initiatives are the annual Victoria's Vital Signs Report, which identifies areas of need and measures key issue areas affecting the capital region's quality of life. Other examples are the Every Steps Count Running Walking Program and the Smart and Caring Physical Literacy Program launched in Victoria by the Governor General. Many of her programs have been replicated and successfully implemented across British Columbia, Canada, and indeed beyond. The Victoria Foundation is also involved in projects, building relations and capacity with First Nations communities. Sandra is a change maker, a supporter of people, ideas, and action. She does this quietly, using every opportunity to redirect the spotlight onto others. She frequently advises nonprofits on governance issues, recognizing that good governance is correlated to their impact. She's regularly sought as a valued participant or leader for other community initiatives. Your Honour, Madam Premier, for the Order of British Columbia, I present Sandra Richardson. I call on Robert Robinson of Vancouver. I'm 
I'm slower than I used to. Oh, <laughs> doing just fine. Robert Red Robinson is a well-known broadcaster who has used his public recognition to support and promote many fundraising initiatives. Red began his career as a 16-year-old high school disc jockey and grew to be the most awarded radio, radio entertainment performer in the history of British Columbia. He's helped countless broadcasters get their start and has given valuable advice on how to succeed in the business. Red was the first radio disc jockey to play rock and roll in Vancouver, introducing his audiences. <laughs> Introducing his audiences to the likes of Elvis Presley and Buddy Holly in the 50s and 60s. He's impacted the history of rockabilly and rock and roll music throughout North America, enough so that a musical based on his life, Red Rock Diner, has toured extensively. In the 23 years, he hosted the Timmy's Christmas Telethon, telethon for the BC Lions Society for Children with Disabilities. More than $100 million has been raised. He was honored with the floor in the Lions International Children's Building. In addition to many broadcast and music industry awards, he received an honorary degree from the University of the Fraser Valley, the Canada 125 Award, and the Queen Elizabeth II Golden Jubilee Medal. Your honor, Madam Premier, for the Order of British Columbia, I present Robert Robertson. I call David Sidhu of Vancouver. David Sidhu, a sporting legend and investment banker, has leveraged his success to become a leading philanthropist and a catalyst for improving the lives of many British Columbians through his support of many community programs. Born and raised in New Westminster, David led the UBC Thunderbirds to an undefeated season and first ever Vanier Cup National Football Championship in 1982. He then played five years with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, becoming the first person of Indian descent to play professional football. After retiring from professional sports, he went on to build several companies in the energy sector and has been a founding shareholder of many startups. He has been most impactful in making a difference in the lives of youth all across British Columbia. David and his wife, Manji, started Sidhu Family Giving, an organization actively involved in the community for the betterment of families and at-risk at youth of all ages, specifically supporting children's breakfast programs, children's cancer research, mentoring programs, teenage sports programs, and community scholarships. Additionally, the Sidhu Family Athletics Endowment is the largest of its kind at UBC. David has been inducted both into the UBC Sports Hall of Fame and the BC Football Hall of Fame and has been recognized with several honors locally, internationally in business, community leadership and philanthropy. Your honor, Madam Premier, for the Order of British Columbia, I present David Sidhu. I call Brian Smith of Victoria.
Brian Smith has served the public in elected roles at the provincial and municipal levels and has led significant social innovations in the arenas of sports, education, law, and business. As Mayor of Oak Bay, Brian was instrumental in the development of affordable housing for seniors and low-income families and was a driving force behind a new recreation centre and the establishment of the per first public indoor tennis centre in Canada. He served on the board of Tennis Canada and used his leadership skills to move the sport forward both locally and nationally. Early in his law career, he established the first legal aid office in Victoria and later, as BC's Attorney General, he supported victims' rights at the local level. He worked to establish the International Commercial Arbitration Centre and helped shape the repatriation of Canada's constitution. First Nations relationships have been fostered through his legal, business and community service. As Chair of BC Hydro, Brian worked to create partnerships. And as Chair of CN, he hired a First Nations leader to improve relations in BC and advocated for greater charitable contributions from the company. He currently serves as Chief Treaty Negotiator for the Federal Government in the Kootenays. Brian was awarded the Queen's Commemorative Medal for Public Service in 1992. Your Honour, Madam Premier, for the Order of British Columbia, I present Brian Smith. call Marjorie White of New Westminster. Marjorie White is a pioneering community builder who changed the framework of, of supports for Aboriginal peoples leaving reserves. She was one of the founders of the first Aboriginal service agencies in Canada to assist Aboriginals migrating to urban centres. That social innovation evolved into a National Friendship Centres movement that now serves hundreds of thousands of Aboriginal peoples. Today there are 25 Friendship Centres in British Columbia and collectively they make up the largest network of service providing agencies in BC, providing direct services and advocacy for off-reserve and urban Aboriginal peoples. They also serve as bridges between the Indigenous and non-Indigenous people throughout BC towns and cities. Marjorie has also helped found the Circle of Eagle Society, a halfway home for those leaving incarceration, which provides a link to cultural supports, teachings and guidance from appropriate service programs. She was the first Aboriginal person appointed as a citizenship court judge in Canada and the first woman and first Aboriginal person appointed to the Vancouver Police Commission. Marjorie has received many awards, including the Queen Elizabeth II Golden Jubilee Medal. She is recognized by her own Hayat, Hayat First Nation as a cultural leader and as a high-ranking matriarch in the potlatch system. Your Honour, Madam Premier, for the Order of British Columbia, I present Marjorie White. I call Peter Wong of Vancouver. Mm. 
Dr. Peter K.K. Wong is a community leader, businessman, philanthropist, and a physician who serves a large number of patients with multicultural backgrounds in Vancouver. Peter's been involved with a range of significant community organizations, including the Vancouver Police Board and the Chinese Cultural Center of Greater Vancouver. He led the recent successful rezoning of Vancouver's Chinatown and the start of its economic and historic revitalization. With his father, King Wong's leadership, they successfully rallied to prevent the building of the Georgia Viaducts through Chinatown, negotiated the acquisition of land from BC Hydro to build the Vancouver Chinatown Parkade, and fought the restriction of Chinese barbecue foods by the federal government. In addition to his thriving medical practice, Peter has launched several successful businesses in various industries and has been an influential advocate for strong trade relations with China, participating in a number of trade missions with all levels of government. The government of China, through the Consulate General, has appointed him a member of the Western Returned Scholars Association. He also serves as a special advisor to the Muskegon Nation for Asia Pacific Affairs working to increase partnerships and trade opportunities. Peter's a strong advocate of education, a founder of West Point Gray Academy and its foundation. The nonprofit school has more than 900 students enrolled and promotes global citizenship. Your Honour, Madam Premier for the Order of British Columbia, I present Dr. Peter Wong. Call Eric Yoshida of Vancouver. Dr. Eric Yoshida is recognized throughout Canada and indeed around the world for his clinical care and research excellence in liver disease. Following medical school in Toronto, he came to BC for his residency in 1989 and has remained here. As medical director of the BC Liver Transplant Program, he found a way for patients with hepatitis B to have successful liver transplants and established the first program in Canada to allow HIV patients to have liver transplantation. He discovered that BC's First Nations communities suffered disproportionately from primary biliary cirrhosis and autoimmune liver disease destroying the stereotype that alcoholic liver disease was the problem and clearing the way for First Nations patients to undergo liver transplantation. He's an outstanding teacher, committing many hours to convey the sophisticated knowledge of hepatology and hepatitis to medical trainees of all levels. He's worked with Success, a large multicultural social agency, to bring its clients awareness that hepatitis is a silent disease until the latter stage and early diagnosis is critical. Eric has published more than 220 peer-reviewed papers. He's received many awards, including the, Diamond, the Queen Elizabeth II Diamond Jubilee Medal and the Clinical Excellence Award from the Vancouver General Hospital. Your Honour, Madam Premier, for the Order of British Columbia, I present Eric Yoshida. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the 2016 inductees to the Order of British Columbia. What an outstanding group of British Columbians. Can we give them one more round of applause?
Thank you. And thank you, Jeremy. It's a very great honour for me to welcome you all to Government House, our ceremonial home, for this most prestigious event of the year. C'est un très grand honneur de vous souhaiter à, à la bienvenue en cette maison historique en notre province. And where better to celebrate the highest honour that the province bestows than in this beautiful location, which stands today on the traditional territory of the Esquimalt and Songhees First Nations of the Coast Salish people, whose wisdom, traditions and customs handed down through untold centuries we also honour. Today's ceremony is another step in building our shared history. This past year, I've continued to travel to countless valleys as part of my, my quest in this five-year journey to visit every valley. And believe me, the diversity, the beauty and uniqueness of each area never ceases to amaze me. When I see the music, the arts performed in places like Powell River, Vernon and Prince George, the museums and parks in Tumbler Ridge and Haida Gwaii, and everywhere the incredible multiculturalism and vibrant young people, I am so impressed. But what I have learned above all else is this, that in every corner of this province, it is the exceptional character, determination, and caring of the people who live in these valleys that has made British Columbia the outstanding place that it is today. This investiture recognizes 16 of these exceptional individuals for their outstanding achievements in many different arenas. Their hard work, determination, and generosity of spirit have contributed immeasurably to the success of communities in every valley. We thank the members of the Independent Advisory Council, chaired by Chief Justice Robert Bowman, and including all those that are here today and those that couldn't be with us. Thank you so much. I can only barely imagine the difficulty of the task you have that you face when you look over all of the applications and nominations. Thank you for your dedication to the integrity of the process on our behalf. As I reviewed the biographies of today's honorees and read about their outstanding accomplishments and countless ways in which they've helped to make this province, and indeed the world, a better place, I was again humbled. Certain common words and themes appear repeatedly in their biographies. Whether they achieved in the field of athletics, the arts, business, education, the environment, healthcare, or service. In their histories, you repeatedly hear that they are outstanding educators. They are mentors, champions for change, innovation, and creativity. If I were to attempt to sum up the lives and contributions of today's honorees, I would label them as diligent champions. Diligent, not a word that you come across today often except in legal interpretations, but a word that portrays persistence, tirelessness, dedication, determination, and perhaps even a measure of obstinacy thrown in. It's possibly this resolve, which is a kinder word for stubbornness, <clears throat> that has caused these individuals to persist as they develop new technologies or institutions, as they push themselves and others to peak physical performance championed a cause in order to improve life for others, or worked to bring people together to, to create synergies that produce positive results. It's this determination to improve the quality of life for others that has built the quality of life that we in this province are so privileged to enjoy. As we look around the world, there's much turmoil. Electronic communication means that we have instant information but I fear that it does not mean we are more connected. I am reminded of the time my late husband flew a big game outfitter to one of his outposts in the Yukon. On arrival, he discovered someone had helped themselves to his equipment. He immediately requested transportation back to Whitehorse, where he directly challenged a known competitor and requested that he return his belongings to their proper place by that evening or else. 
In small communities, we tend to know our enemies and can confront them and hold them accountable. It is often said that it takes a village to raise a child. Perhaps it is more correctly stated that it takes community to sustain peace and stability. The people we honor today are community builders. It's important to thank their families and loved ones who are here today as well, because we know that without your support, our recipients would have had to struggle in many ways. And you too have helped building this smart and caring community. As direct representative of our monarch, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II of British Columbia, I congratulate and thank you. Thank you for inspiring us with what you have done, not only for all of us today, but to build community and to improve the future for generations to come. As your chancellor, I am deeply honored to welcome all of you to the Order of British Columbia. Thank you. Our current recipients, um, Father Hand, in your remarks, you talked a little bit about you talked a lot about love, and I want to. It reminded me of a of a story uh, a priest, our priest, was telling us in church not long ago about one of the children of love, which is forgiveness. He talked about how no matter what we've done in our lives, no no matter how many mistakes we've made. God's forgiveness, the door to his grace is always open no matter what we've done. And my 15-year-old son leaned over in the pew and said, I sure bet you're glad to hear that, eh, Mom? <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, you don't, you don't need a 15-year-old uh, son to remind you to be humble uh, because um, in this job and for all of us here, we have this event every year to attend to meet the recipients of the Order of British Columbia who have accomplished such a remarkable amount for our province, our country, and for the world. If there is a humbling moment, it must be today for all the rest of us as we sit in your august company and hear about what it is you've accomplished. A young woman um, who job shouted me um, asked me, uh, and she was frustrated because all her life at um, her parents and television and Oprah had been telling her to find her passion. And she said, I haven't found my passion. My answer to that comes from Viktor Frankl, who wrote a book called Man's Search for Meaning. In it, he says, life is not about us. It is not about what we want. We should not ask life what it intends for, what we intend for ourselves, but we should ask our lives what the world wants from us. And each of our recipients today, although each of them undoubtedly had a calling, decided that they would answer the world's call to answer life's call and to step up and make a tremendous difference. And each of you in your various fields, some of you fighting for the vulnerable people who have no voice, some of you fighting for a better place for women and girls in our society. Some of you making sure that we remember the past, that it is so essential for our society that First Nations built before Europeans came. And some of you building a future for First Nations that is entirely different, a future that is bright. Some of you who have gone out and created employment for thousands of people and then taken that wealth and turned it into doing good around the world. Some of you have decided to start saving lives and doing good and turned that into creating jobs and employment for people in our province. Some of you who have given voice through the arts, through our history, have given voice to our collective narrative so we remember who we are and we are always connected through our music, through writing, through remembering our history. Some of you who've proven that broadcasters can get somewhere in life. <laughs> and some of you who have devoted your lives to sports, healthy living. Some of you who have made sure that we are celebrating the diversity of our community. Each of you, most of all, is an example for our children. And for me, the most important thing about the Order of British Columbia and your selection today, if I may be so bold, 
is to say, and you know this, it isn't about you. It is about the example that you set and in holding you up as, a, as something to look to for our children, we remind them that in a world where we watch reality television and we, we see uh, Republican conventions <laughs> and all we seem to see is people being unkind, that the ultimate purpose in our lives is that other child of love, which is kindness. And each of you is an example for our children of how by being kind, by be giving love, and by doing good, we get more back than we give. So thank you for your example. You have built our province, you have made it better, and in setting an example for another generation of British Columbians, you will allow them to strive to do good, to be kind, and to give love. Thank you, and congratulations.